Hey, I'm Ronnie Tate from Data61 and Macro University in Sydney, Australia. I will present our work published in the ACM Transactions on Interactive Intelligence Systems on Achieving Personality Sensing Using Physiological Signals. This work was carried out in collaboration with my colleagues from Macro University, the University of Sydney, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional owners of the land from which I'm talking today and pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. We're all different and the way we interact with others and the world is largely based on our personality. Being able to categorize and quantify personality has many benefits. Psychologists treating patients with psychopathy need to monitor their progress. As an HA specialist, personality detection could also help you provide a different experience to shoppers with compulsive buying as opposed to more conservative profiles. Models such as the Doctrail, BizPass, or Hexaco can address these needs. Our psychologists would closely monitor their patients' primary psychopathy scores for emotional aspects and the secondary psychopathy for behavioral aspects, for example. On the other hand, you may focus on BAS fund seeking for your compulsive shoppers while you leverage the BAS drive, which reflects the pursuit of goals for your other shoppers. Currently, such data is acquired through well established questionnaires but are typically long to administer and subject to manipulation because the questions are openly linked to the traits. So we design a framework for the objective detection of personality traits. Some stimuli are given to user while we collect a range of physiological and behavioral signals from which we extract a series of features. We then use machine learning to predict the personality traits rankings of the user on the previous uh, inventory case. To calibrate the models, we train them using supervised machine learning using ground truth data obtained through questionnaires. We wanted sensors which are reliable, relatively cheap, and easy to deploy in order to ensure our framework can be used in practice. We used eye tracking glasses, ATG, and galvanic skin response, GSR, which is also known as electrodermal activity and basically measures swelling. Both types of sensors were of particular interest as they have been shown to correlate with emotional states. Our stimuli focus on triggering such emotional responses, which we did through a hand-picked sample of 50 images from the YAPS dataset. That we split into five groups, such as HAHV for high arousal, high valence, which would mean a strong positive content. We also included short clips from seven movies in the film team's dataset. For example, one of the funniest scenes in a fish called Venda was used for the amusement emotion. 21 staff and students from our organization participated in this 55-minute study in lab conditions. Our paper gives more details about the workflow presented here, but as you can see, we alternated images, videos, and survey tasks. The image stimuli was shown for a total of 9 minutes, while the videos ran for 14 minutes in total. Moving to the data analysis, we extracted 10 ETG features and 9 GDSR features. With well over 300 features in total, there was a risk of overfitting in the machine learning models, so we applied correlation-based feature selection. CFS basically favors features that are highly correlated with the class label, hence very informative for the predictions, but which are weakly correlated with other features, hence limiting redundant information. CFS was applied to each individual trait, dropping the number of features by more than 90%. We compared seven classifiers using the Weka open source toolbox. Since our sample population was small and not exhibiting any specific pathology, we beamed the survey data into low, medium, and high using equal frequency beams for each trait to ensure uniform distributions of subjects across the classes. We applied a live one hour testing whereby the model is trained using all but one participant and testing on the remaining one. This process is then repeated for each participant and the accuracy of F1 scores averaged over all the repeats. When combining all traits, the naive base classifier, NB, performed best for both ETG and GSR, as shown in the table at the bottom. We attribute this in part to the use of CFS, since the naive base performance is adversely affected by the highly correlated input features, which CFS will reduce. We don't have time for thorough analysis here, so I refer you to our paper for detailed examinations of the results, also including the F1 scores, which are not shown here. However, the comparative analysis of ETG and GSR shows that the former is slightly better predictor of the personality traits, although GSR 
performs better on primary psychopathy and tactics when taken individually. As hinted in the previous slide, Naive Bayes outperforms the other models globally and for most traits, with logistic regression, LR, and support vector machine, SVM, also performing well, in particular for BISBAS and some D3 traits. This could provide some flexibility when training models with larger populations, for example, as Naive Bayes was typically much slower. Another interesting finding revolves around traits associated with effects. Personality traits have been shown to be driven by three major aspects, affect, cognitions, and behaviors. Some of the traits in our inventories fall into the affect category and are clearly better predicted than the rest. These traits like tactics, views, morality, bis, best fun seeking or resilience achieve accuracies of over 90% and we attribute this result to the affect focus of our stimuli. We also looked at differences between image and video stimuli on the predictions. We found that video is globally superior to images, possibly because they have been shown to evoke stronger emotional and physiological responses. However, the differences between video and images are not statistically significant, either for ETG, as shown here, or for GSR. However, combining the data for, from images and video blocks increased the predictive accuracy significantly for both ETG and GSR. Practically, this means that using a single stimuli should be enough to provide high accuracies in a shorter time period, but deploying both of types of stimuli would improve the quality of the readings. Since we use CFS to select features, this gave us the opportunity to check how often each feature gets selected and use it as a proxy for their predictive qualities. Looking at the ETG features, for example, we found that saccade rate, SR, was the dominant feature, which may be explained by existing research, which established links between reduced saccade movements and some facets of psychopathy. Conversely, the literature showed that subjects with higher psychopathy did not exhibit pupil sizes changes in response to effects, affective stimuli. Our results corroborate this finding, as the vertical pupil size, PY in particular, is the least predictive feature for the D3 group. Turning to BISPAS, the blink rate, BR, was the most predictive feature, which is supported by previous research showing links between BAS and eye blink responses. Similarly, the saccade fixation ratio, SFR, dominated features for hexaco, which is supported by, by existing findings of links between fixations and a number of the hexaco traits, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, which is the inverse of resiliency. So it was truly exciting for us to bridge our finding with past research, and I refer you to our paper to, for more of these, uh, especially using GSR. Now, can you guess what happened when we combine the ETG and GSR features? The combination further improved the accuracy, also improving results for individual traits almost across the board. In practical terms, this gives practitioners some flexibility around the equipment they need to deploy, since the individual sensors perform well on their own, but the combination can be used when further sensitivity is required. There is a lot more to discover in the paper, but to summarize things from high level, we believe our framework through the basis for objective personality trait detection using physiological and behavioral signals. This can provide fast readings since the participants simply need to watch a few images or video clips, and it provides more reliable results as the signals are difficult, if at all possible, to consciously control. Our implementation produced accuracies far superior to those observed in past research, and our analysis showed that there is flexibility in the deployment options, whether due to cost, time, or other practical constraints, or in view of the traits to analyze, practitioners are able to select GSR or ETG as input signals, images or video as stimuli, and between a range of machine learning models. All combinations produced high results in our experiment, although combining stimuli and signals was eventually superior. We feel we have barely started this exploration and hope to carry on with larger participant pools, hopefully involving participants with specific pathology to gauge how extreme values may be ranked. We may also start tuning the machine learning models to increase accuracy. Thank you.